And every day I come up here and see my son, I hate him even more. The pain that I see in my son, oh, is just unbearable to me. This is my son that I've seen walk and run and play with his son. And now they're saying he's going to be wheelchair bound for the rest of his life. Because this lake here is um, <clears throat> drop footed and not working right. And, or at least, you know, he's not going to be walking for a long, long time if the prosthesis works and everything goes fine. How do you feel knowing that Joshua Johnson is now in custody? Relieved. When I got that call from the detective that he was in jail, a smile went across my face. I high-fived my grandson. My grandson took off running out here to the lobby here and told Grandpa, and I was telling all the nurses, they got him, they got him. Went back home, got it all over Facebook. Think he's, he's in jail, where he belongs. Do you think it would take this long? Did you expect faster results? What, what were your, your expectations like? once they put the word out to us that they were looking for I kind of was hoping it'd be faster results, but then knowing that he hadn't turned himself in yet, I was kind of worried that he had jumped Washington and had disappeared. So part of me was thinking they were never going to catch him. How about all the people who knew something, tried to get him to turn himself in, but kind of may or may not have come forward to the authorities? Shame on them. I don't know how they live with themselves. But they're the ones that do have to live with themselves for hi hiding him out, knowing what a horrible, horrible crime he did. Does Paul know he's in custody? Yes. How's he feeling? He smiled. I didn't think he would, but he did. He smiled, and I'm glad he did. I know we talked about it. Again, I'm concerned how many more people in that family are out there doing drugs, driving cars. Because the last thing I want is another family to have to go through this. Already there's two families. There's the family that she hit, and now there's mine. It just doesn't stop with Paul. This affects me, this affects his son. His brothers, his sisters, everybody, his aunt. Um, Joshua had his first court appearance this morning. Do you think you'll ever want to see him in court or follow his case? Oh, I plan on it. I planned on being there this morning. But I'm very angry. Very angry. And I think everybody can understand why. And I was up getting ready. And my husband said, please don't go. Please, as angry as you are, you're going to see that man in that courtroom. And you're going to start spouting things that aren't allowed in a courtroom. Or you're going to jump to go get him. And you're going to end up in jail. So I'm begging you, please don't go. And I listened to him. And I'm glad I did, because he's right. He was reading my mind because it's the only reason I wanted to go to that court today. I wanted to get at that man. I wanted to tell him just what I thought of him. And in that courtroom with that judge was not the right place to tell him. What would you like to see happen to him? I want him to go to prison. He needs a lot longer than what his mother got. That's for sure. I hear she only got like three years. He needs a lot longer. And I'd actually like him 
to spend whatever his sentence is, half of that in solitary confinement, all by himself with just a book to read. So he has nothing but all these thoughts of what he's done to my son, just eating and eating in his brain. So the memory never goes away. The thoughts never go away. Because they're never going to leave me. I have dreams and nightmares every night since this has happened. I wake up in a cold sweat, crying, thinking of my son back there. Vincent cries, his son cries every night for his daddy. And the day they took his dad's leg was the roughest on his son. It was so bad on him. Oh, that little boy cried so bad. He wouldn't leave the hospital. I couldn't get him to go anywhere. He wanted to be here, but he cried and cried and cried. And I still say, I wish it was me. I wish I could go in that room and take it all away from him and put myself there. Because this shouldn't be my son in there. And I hate that man. I know hate is a big word, but I hate that man. That man hit him, left him there to die, and drove off. And he's been leading a nice little life for almost two months. It's wrong. They have been working very hard. Detective Young has been keeping me up to date on everything when he can, when possible. He's been very kind, very considerate. And that man is awesome. I'm very thankful. The nurses have been very kind. They're amazing. They get you smiling. They even get Paul smiling. But I got to thank you guys, the news crew. Because if it wasn't for you, I don't think he'd have got caught. I really don't. You guys getting his picture out there for me and everything you've done, you're amazing. And you guys need a hand because you're great. All of you. going to be a long road from here with the trials and I'm still going to need you guys but it's going to be a long road but I'm ready for it um he's probably going to be up well but the cert he was planning on good they were planning on sending him down to the fourth floor rehab here in a couple weeks but now with this surgery planned, it'll probably be about another three, four weeks or something. Yeah. And then he'll go down to the fourth floor rehab. I guess they've got like little apartments or so, I don't, so, something down there. And he'll go down there and spend maybe two, three months down there trying to get ready to transition to come home. Yeah. Because there's a small bathroom downstairs but a wheelchair will not fit into it. And there's no way he could use that bathroom. But all the uh, showers and bathtubs are all upstairs. So he's got to learn to go upstairs and downstairs to get to the showers. So he's got a long ways to go before he can come home. Because he's- Except this Friday, he's having a cadaver bone put in his right leg. Yes because part of his bone in the right leg, um, they believe, was left at the scene with the accident. So um, Friday he goes in for surgery to have that bone put in to his right leg, because they found a big chunk when they did the x-ray is missing. The leg is healing good, but it's missing there, so he has to have that done. But they've checked this leg that they amputated and um, I guess 
the doctor didn't find any infection in it, which is a good sign. So there's no infection coming out of it or, and that's a very, very good sign. And they took that below They took it about right here. He has pictures of it. I've got a picture of it, but it's about right here. But they were afraid that they were going to have to take it further up. And so far, I, the signs look like it, they might be able to stay at here, which is good for the, uh, the fake laid, the uh, prosthetic. Yeah. And his arm is, is, he can feel the pins in his arm, but um, he's got movement on it now. He doesn't have to have a weight limit of five pounds. But his back, there's still, the incision there on his back is still opening a little bit because he's been laying on his back a lot. And um, his memory. I still need to get, figure out, I've asked several times for a neurologist to come up here and see my son. But I can't get one. I don't know why. Because he's got something going on up here in the brain. I mean, when he had his accident, his head was like four different shapes when I seen him. And he still doesn't remember things. He says his last memory, or his first memory was March 2nd. But there's things that happened just a week ago that he's like, did not. No, it didn't. It didn't happen. I'm like, yeah, sweetie, it did. So he's still having problems up there with memory. But he had a serious, serious head trauma. That was just, that was bad. I don't know if you've seen the pictures of his head trauma. And when he went in that car, the guy's jaw slammed on the brakes and Paul went flying back out. And the metal part up here on the top of the hood sliced his head three quarters of the way around, two inches deep. And he had staples all the way around here and down his face. It was, I can give you pictures, it was, it was horrific. And he had bruises, bruising was in his beard um, I didn't know he had bruising in there and it was all messed up and it was when he was down in ICU and I took a comb and I was trying to do mom things and trying to comb his beard and I heard him going blah, 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 but he was still in, in a coma and I was like what the heck and then it just made me think something's in there he's reacting to pain or something so I started moving and the bruise that was underneath that beard was just Oh, hor horrific. And then he had bruising behind his ears and the whole back of his head was just, and it, the, the shape was just, oh, it was horrid. It was horrid. He had bruises where he'd never think to have bruises. But those are healing up. But yeah, I can be happy because he's alive. No legs, one leg. My son is alive. No thanks to Josh, but he's alive. Did Josh call your son at one point? Oh, yes, he did. What, did, did your son talk to him? Yeah. Was that, how did that go? Uh, Josh called him, and um, first thing out of his mouth was, Hi, Paul, this is Josh Johnson. I'm the guy who hit you. And the first question I need to ask you is if you're going to live or if you're going to die. Paul told him he was going to live. Then he went on to ask him if uh, that he was going to turn him, that he was sorry, and that he planned on turning himself in as soon as he got his affairs in order and his life situated. And that he wanted to come up here to the hospital and shake my son's hand and personally apologize. And then he planned on turning himself into the police. That, I believe, was over a month ago. And I'm wondering if the reason he asked if my son was going to live or die is because I seriously think he was worried whether he was going to get murder charges or just felony hit and run. Because you don't ask that kind of question to somebody you hit and left on the side of the road. Are you going to live or are you going to die? Unless you're worried you're going to go for murder. Well, thank God to the people who found my son. He's living. 
because the people that got to him got to him just in time because right when the ambulance got there, they had to tube him because he was going. A minute later and he would have been dead. And that's one of my nightmares that I have all the time is that they didn't get to him in time. And that's why I hate Josh. He's put me through these nightmares. He's put me through these, my family through hell. Through horrible hell. He could have stopped. If he says it was an accident, he could have stopped. He's a monster. Just like his mother. I'm sorry, they're, they're monsters in my books. You don't do that to people. And I hate him. I have to see my son like that every day. I have to see him in pain. I have to see him cry. I hate those, I hate him. I hope he rots in prison. God, I hate that man. Are we done, dear? I hate that man.